What up? So in this video we're going to be going over DHCP configuration. If you don't know what DHCP is, it's a way to dynamically assign IP addresses to hosts. And we can do this in one of two ways in Packet Tracer. Either by using a DHCP server or by configuring one of the routers as a DHCP server. So we're going to be using both in this video, and what we're going to do is we're going to place a DHCP server here in the 3.3.0 network. Um, I've already placed it. If, if you notice, I've already made a few changes. I've added a network off of router 6 up here, the 10.10.3 network, and also a network here off router 7, which is the 10.10.2 network. These are going to be our uh, DHCP hosts for our router cluster up here but we've placed a DHCP server here in the 3.3.3 network and this is going to serve as the DHCP server for all of our hosts hanging off of our trio of routers here so it's going to service this whole area <coughs> now the router over here is going to service these two networks and any other network that we're going to add off of uh, these four routers here now I'm just going to talk a little bit about DHCP First, before we do any configurations, it stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Basically, what it means is that we don't have to statically assign IPs to our host machines, so we don't have to physically go in and type in an IP for all of these hosts anymore. And the way this works is a host will be set up to pull from DHCP, and it'll send out a broadcast message. This message will contain a source IP of all zeros and a destination IP of all 255s. So it's a broadcast message. Um, destination MAC also will be a broadcast MAC address, which is all Fs. And the host will basically be saying, I don't have an IP address, which is what the all zeros are for. And I'm looking for someone that can give me an IP, which is why it's a destination broadcast message. Now, in the case of 3.3.1 down here, we're going to configure that to pull from DHCP. And it'll send out a broadcast message with the all zeros and all 255s and it'll get it'll hit the switch and it'll broadcast that out just like it does any other broadcast it's going to get received by our server over here and it's going to recognize it as a DHCP request because we have it configured to act as a DHCP server it'll be listening on port 67 host will be sending the request on port 68 which is the client port assignment for DHCP requests and our server here will receive the request on port 67 and look for what's called a DHCP pool and it'll look for a pool that's in the same subnet as the host now since the server received the request with a source IP of all zeros it's going to know that <coughs> sorry that the request came from a host on its own subnet which is this the 3.3.0 network now it's going to look for a pool that falls within the subnet and it'll look for a usable IP that it can dish out and the server will keep track of what IPs it's already handed out and which IPs it can hand out at the time. Now we're also going to configure 1.1.1.1 to pull DHCP from the same server. Now you might already be thinking that there's a problem with this since DHCP is a broadcast message then router 0 should block it because by default routers block broadcasts. Now because this is the case we're gonna have to add a command on router 0. This is the IP helper address command and what this does is it'll specify a destination to send broadcast messages to and in packet tracer this pretty much just applies to DHCP requests. In the real world you can configure this command down to support uh, whichever broadcast message that you wish to forward but the main point is that the router will forward all specified broadcast messages as unicast to whichever IP we configure on there. Now we're also going to have to configure a pool for the 1.1.1.0 network on the DHCP server <coughs> and when the unicast is received by the server it's going to find an IP to give to host in the 1.1.1.0 network and if you're wondering how this works uh, since you might think that the source IP is going to be all zeros, it's actually not in this case. Router zero with the IP helper address command is actually going to change the source IP on that packet to whichever interface it received it on. 
So the server is actually going to receive this DHCP request from router 0 with a source IP of 1.1.1.254, which is host 1.1.1's uh, gateway. So the server is going to know what pool to pull from, uh, judging by the source IP address. So it'll know to pull from the 1.1.1.0 network. Once we configure the pool, we're going to have to configure a pool for everything we want it to dish out. But yeah, once it finds an address in the pool, it's going to send the message back, and this host will have an IP address via DHCP. Now over here is going to be the same thing, except for we're going to be configuring router 6 to act as a DHCP server. So it's, a, it's just, just a little bit different configuration, mainly packet tracer kind of stuff. But this network is going to receive DHCP directly from this router. And this router 7 is going to have to have the IP helper address command to point to router 6. So with all of that being said, let's jump in and start configuring this shit up. First we're going to go on to our DHCP server. We're going to give it an IP address. Now we're going to give this server a static IP because we want to know what our server's address is at all times. We don't want it the like lease expiring or anything. We don't want it to pull from DHCP because well, I mean, we don't want the address to possibly change. We want to know what the IP of our DHCP server is. And we're giving it 3.3.3.2 with a slash 24 mask. Its default gateway is going to be 3.3.3.254. Not worrying about the DHCP, or not DHCP, DNS server yet. And after we've configured its IP, we're going to go into the services tab and go into the DHCP service and turn it on. Now by default we've got a pool called server pool. Um, I'm actually not going to change this name because Packet Tracer likes to have an issue with uh, the server pool. If you don't configure it for anything, it'll actually, there's like a bug and it'll populate with an actual IP address for whatever other pool you configure. And it's just, it's just not good. So we're going to use server pool as our uh, pool for 3.3.3.0 network. Now we're going to type in the default gateway for these hosts, which is going to be .254. Not worry about a DNS server, and we're going to have the IP addresses start at 3.3.3.10, just to give us give us a range of 10 IPs that we can statically assign and not have it dish out. Slash 24 mask, maximum number of users. Um, don't yeah, whatever. Not going to worry about those. Now we're going to hit save. Now that pool's configured. Now we're going to make a new one. I'm just going to call it 1.1.1.1 pool. Give that the default gateway of the 1.1.1.0 network, which is .254. And change the start IP to 1.1.1.10 as well. I'm going to hit add, save, just to be safe. And we'll go ahead and do a pool for the 2.2.2 network, even though we're not going to configure any hosts to pull DHCP on this network. 254, 222, 10. Add, save, exit. So now if we go to host 3.3.3.1 and go to its IP address configuration, see we already have the static IP of 3.3.3.1, but if we switch this over to DHCP, then it pulls an IP automatically, 3.3.3.10, the first usable IP in that <coughs> pool that we configured. And it automatically pulls its default gateway subnet mask and the DNS server if we configured one. Now let's go up to 1.1.1.1. If we go to DHCP here, <coughs> we will see that the request should fail and it will default over to uh, a pipa it'll sign itself its own bullshit ip address that we don't really give a shit about so what we're going to have to do to have this host pull from dhcp is uh, go to router zero go to the interface that this host is hanging off of which is fast ethernet zero slash zero and we're going to configure an ip helper address of the DHCP server, which is 
and that is all we have to do. We will have to put this command on any interface that we want to pull from DHCP. So the 4.4.4.0 network, for example, we don't we didn't configure a pool up for that. We're just not going to have that pool from DHCP. So we're not going to put that command on the fast ethernet uh, 0 0.20 interface because we don't want those hosts to pull DHCP. For whatever reason this could be, I just I just say so. So that's how it's going to be. <laughs> if we go to back to our hosts and switch it back to static and DHCP, it should now pull an address right there, 1.1.1.11 from the DHCP server. So that's pretty much all you really need to know on how to configure DHCP from a server. All you need to know is if they're on the same subnet, no really configuration on the router is required. And if they're on a different subnet, use the IP helper address command to uh, tell it where to point the requests. So now we're going to go to router 6. And we're just going to set this up as a DHCP server. We're only going to have two networks, two pools in here. But the command is under global config is a IP DHCP. And there's, you can see there's three commands that we can use under this, excluded address, pool, and relay. We're going to be using the excluded addresses and the pools. So first we're just going to define our excluded addresses. Now first we're going to have to type in the low IP. So we're going to configure this up for the 10.10.3.0 .10 network. So 10.10.3. And this will be the first IP that we uh, want it to exclude. So we're going to exclude .1. And the second one is the high IP, so we want it to exclude 1 through 10. So this one will be 10.10.3.10. What this command does is it tells the router to ignore IP addresses 10.10.3.1 through 10.10.3.10. It will not dish these out in DHCP. Now we're going to do the same thing here, but we're going to change the 3 to 2. This is for our other network that will be hanging off of router 7 down there. Now the next command to configure up the pools is just IP DHCP pool and we're going to have to give it a name. So we're going to give this one the name of router6 underscore network. And you can see we have a few commands under here we can use default router which is the default gateway for the host, DNS server, uh, network which is going to be the network that we're going to uh, dish out and options. These are pretty much used for an example would be voice over IP. You're going to have to assign a uh, DHCP option for uh, VoIP phones. But first we're going to just use the network command. I'm going to put in 10.10.10 .10 .10, no not 10. 10.10.3.0 and the subnet mask which is a slash 24 so 3255 is in a 0 and enter. Now we're going to put in two more commands here, the default router command 10.10.3.254, this is the default gateway for those hosts, and uh, just kidding, that's going to be the only one we put in there, I'm used to putting in DNS as well, but I'm going to leave that out for now. So we can exit out of that, do the same command again, IP DHCP pool, oh, and the name, I'm going to do router 7 network. Give that the network of 10.10.2.0 with a slash 24 mask and a default router of 10.10.2.254. Now that is it. This router is now configured to dish out DHCP requests for those two networks. And it's also going to, going to exclude the address ranges that we configured up. I'm just going to make sure that we actually have a .254 address as our default gateway, and we do. So if we go off of router 6 here, into a host configuration, we can say DHCP, and boom, it pulls 10.10.3.11. Go on this one up here, this one should pull .12 or .10. Yep, right there, .12. So DHCP is working in this network. Now down here, Obviously, you know this isn't going to work, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Yep, nope, you get the point. So, interface 
fast ethernet 01 on this router we're going to give that the IP helper address command and we're going to give that the destination IP of router 6 which if I remember correctly 10.10.1.2 is the address of uh, the interface off the switch there so if we go back into the host switch it back over to DHCP boom pulls an IP immediately 10.10.2.11 and this one will also pull. Bam. Now just to verify that we have like complete network connectivity, we're gonna go into the web browser. We're gonna type in the IP of the web server that we configured in uh, video one. Bam, right there. Our network is fully functional at the moment. So that's pretty much all there is to setting up DHCP and Packet Tracer. So like I said before, I'm just gonna go over this again. This host we set to DHCP. It's this router. This router is going to change the IP address on or source IP on the packet it receives because it has the IP helper address command configured. It's going to send it as unicast down to our DHCP server. It's going to see it with a source IP of 1.1.1.254, so it knows it's on the 1.1.1.0 network. It's going to look for that pool. It's going to find a usable IP, and it's going to shit that back to the host, which will receive its dynamically configured IP address. And over here, the exact same thing is happening. This router uh, changes source IP to 10.10.2.254, sends it up to router 6, which looks for the pool, and sends the correct IP back. And for our local networks, they have the source IP of all zeros, broadcast message. It'll hit the DHCP server on the same subnet and get its address back that way. So hope this was a pretty good video. It's not really much to DHCP and Packet Tracer as you can see. Uh, the next video hopefully we're gonna hit, we'll, we'll probably do DNS or set up a, another web server or something. Actually we're gonna do DNS before we do the web server so yeah. We'll say DNS will be the next topic in the video but thanks for watching.